All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Michelle Weinstein, the pitch queen, who is in San Diego, just like myself. How are you doing, Michelle? Yes, I am great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And first of all, let me just ask you, where did you get the name the pitch queen from? <laughs> the pitch queen? Well, uh, one of my friends, his name is Sean, also lives in San Diego, online entrepreneur. I was talking to him about like, what am I going to name myself? I didn't want to use my name. Um, mm -hmm. I'll probably get married one day really soon. And then my last name's going to change. So if I use Michelle Weinstein, mm -hmm. and I'm not a fan of some, you know, people with my last name. So uh, I went with the pitch queen because it was just available on every social media platform and the website when we were doing our brainstorming session. And when I noticed that, I said, okay, let me buy everything and get every single social media handle right now. And, and that's really how the pitch queen came about. But I, I love pitching products, services, um, pitching investors for fundraising. Like that mm -hmm. was always my thing. So it has nothing to do with baseball or softball. Right. <laughs> it only has something to do with <laughs> pitching for, you know, anything sales related. You know, a lot of people think of it as a pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's how the pitch queen came about. <laughs> Excellent. And so what we want to talk about today is Michelle helps people uh, to, and teaches them how to sell and have high value uh, conversation and sell high value services without yes. feeling sleazy, pushy yes. or desperate. Right. <laughs> OK, so let's. The let's... desperate one is actually a really big one because the less you, um, you know, I, I like to call it actually, let's talk about the desperate one because no one's put it that way to me. Mm -hmm. But when you're less desperate as it comes to raising money or, you know, selling a higher value service, the the other client or the investor can sense that. Mm -hmm. And when you don't and I'm not saying like not care, OK, because right. there's the, there's the situation with, uh, I was working with one of my students, uh, Christine, and she was at the other end of the spectrum. Like I could care less if clients work with me or not take it or leave it. And when we come from that place, we're actually doing our clients a disservice mm -hmm. because if they don't work with you and you're the expert, yeah. then there's where the problem lies because they're going to get service somewhere. Yeah. That investor is going to put their money somewhere. So if you truly are the best, and you're the best person for that client to engage with or enroll with in your program services or whatever, when you have the take it or leave it mentality, that's actually hurting your client in front of you. Because mm -hmm. if they sense that and they go somewhere else, but you are the best one to help them, then they're not going to get serviced at the level they could have if you would have just taken a slight percentage off the take it or leave it mentality. <laughs> yeah. However, when you're desperate, right? So if you think about being desperate. And if you think about it, yeah, and if you think about it, right, we're in July. So for a lot of people are on calendar years here, especially salespeople. And this may be the time when they are starting to feel a little desperate because their quota that seemed, it seemed achievable at yeah. the beginning of the year and now seems really daunting. So how do you, how do you control that sense of desperation? Well, and that's the thing. It, it, it's when you come from a place that, especially if you're on a monthly quota, right, and you're getting towards the end of the month, mm -hmm. if you can m work on your mindset to come from a place where it's just the first of the month or it's the second of the month, your sales will naturally start to increase. And the reason why is that the client sense the desperation that you need that next sale, that you have a quota to meet. And when the client feel that they're just another number or they're another quota and they get that sense of desperation, that's where you actually lose more opportunities than win. Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways, and you can just try this right now, if it's getting towards the end of the month, think about it as it's just the first of the month or it's the second of the month. And when you detach from the desperation in that you actually don't really need that client, that client's not going to make or break your quota. You want that client to help and serve them. And that's actually the reason why you want them, not mm. for your benefit. So the desperation typically stems because it has something to do with you when mm -hmm. really a sales process has nothing to do with you. Yeah. So yeah. when you can separate the two, that's when your sales are going to increase. So if it's July, you know, 25th and there's 31 days in July, 
On the 25th, pretend it's July 1st. Mm -hmm. On the 26th, pretend it's July 2nd. And really come from that place in that you're coming you're coming from a clean slate to that client meeting. Yeah. You're going to do everything you would do on the 1st with that client, not what you used to do on the 25th right. with that client. And watch to see what happens on your chance of your clients engaging with you and you actually getting those sales. Yeah, because it's a tough thing sometimes for salespeople because it's like if I say to, if I really need to get this deal done by the end of the month and I'm giving you all sorts of incentives and you're just not biting because guess what? You don't care about whether you get it done by the end of the month because for you, you may be implement, you may have decided that, yeah, you're going to buy this product or service, but you're not going to implement it immediately. So you can buy it next month, month after, it doesn't matter to you. Right. And just because you're offering them incentives, mm -hmm. that doesn't get people to buy. Yeah. What gets people to buy is understanding what would what would move them to implementing it right now. Right. Because I only want to work with people who want to implement right now, who mm -hmm. have a problem they want to solve right now. Because people buy, yes, based on people, but people buy on the emotional side. So if you can't connect the dots to their challenges, to their emotions, an incentive isn't going to move somebody. Right. That, that's actually not the thing that moves the needle. It's working on the other stuff to understand who is ready to make a change right now. Yeah. And uh, focusing your effort and energy on those people versus the numbers people. Yeah. Or as you said earlier, is bringing value to them by actually uh, being able to demonstrate to them why a, a sense of urgency is good for them, why solving their problem earlier would be good for them. Right. Yeah. Right. And so a close... And, and what's it, so one of the things that you could look at is what's it costing them mm -hmm. by not doing it now? So if someone told me that, well, I want to think about it, I want to... This actually happened to me the other day, so yesterday, mm -hmm. okay? So they said, well, I just wanted to get information on your program. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's great. I, I really can appreciate you wanting to get more information on our, you know, program and how I work with accountants and all that other great stuff. But he had so much going on in his personal life. I think there were some illnesses and other things that I'm not, a, I'm not a window shopping place. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I want to help people now. So, you know, I walked him through a nice process and and really being supportive of what he was going through with his parents and his family and all this other stuff. And I said, you know, one thing you might want to consider is every time you put yourself second in line, right? You're putting your family first, mm -hmm. but you probably still have time that you could make a change sure. because every month you don't make a change. It's basically costing this guy about $10,000. Right. So by all means, I will be here in the next three months. I'll be here in six months. So when you realize that the thirty or sixty thousand dollars that it's costing you by waiting, I understand the family stuff, but that stuff's always going to be a part of life. We're human beings; mm -hmm. those challenges are never going to go away. But we have control over certain things in our lives. So I said, you know what? When you're ready, then I'll go through everything on how we can help you. Yeah, but and until the then, you're not going to be a hundred percent present. So I don't want to waste my time if they're not going to be coming to the plate and being 100% present with what they want to do. So a great way, depending on what you sell or your product or service or whatever, is what does it cost that person to stay in the same place each month mm -hmm. or each day, right? And, and bringing that to life. Because once he marinates on that, maybe in the next 30 days, he might reach out. But I didn't make it about my quota. Sure. I didn't make it about my sales or that I have bills to pay or I have anything. I was coming from a place of serving him and mm -hmm. helping him see the reality because I can see the reality loud and clear. You, mm -hmm. He had like a, a master's, a few different designations, and he's only making very little money right. where he could be making probably double if he did it on his own. Mm -hmm. But to take that leap of faith, Basically, as a salesperson, you're helping people get past their fears. Yeah, that's really uh, what we do, right? Yeah, no, and uh, ab absolutely, and you know, helping people realize that there's never the perfect moment to execute something. Oh. There's, there's only oh. your best. Your best moment is is often just now. Is just to take the leap. So a close relation uh, of 
desperate obviously is pushy right so how do you help people because sometimes the people don't mean to be pushy they're just um you know they get caught, caught up in it says people get caught up with it or they they you know they're it's it's tough right sometimes as it says you know it's tough to to wait for the process or to go execute the process sometimes is that uh there's that uh temptation to take shortcuts which immediately translates into pushiness right and when we take shortcuts or we come from a place of desperation, it comes off as pushy to mm -hmm. the client. So one of the ways to not be so pushy is not make this whole process about yourself. So once you can make it not about your quota, once you can make it not about what day of the month it is, what month of the year it is, depending on how you're going to get your bonus, that's where you're going to come from a place of not being pushy. I was told actually yesterday, um, you know, a woman uh, wanted a refund of mm -hmm. her deposit. And she said, Michelle, when you got my deposit, I, you were really pushy. And I said, you know what? I can co completely appreciate that. And what I found is that typically when people make decisions, that's where your decision making process as a client can come across feeling pushy because like you were saying earlier, there's no better time than the present. Mm. And so when you can help someone get past their fear, break through their fear, help make a decision, they might come months later and think that that was pushy. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it was actually just them having a decision of a yes, I want to do this right. or a no. And it's not being pushy. It's actually just their reaction to them making their own decision that someone just guided them. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what, I, I, I can completely appreciate that sometimes it might come off pushy, right? And acknowledging that, sure. I think one of the biggest things salespeople miss all the time is that you don't acknowledge how someone feels mm -hmm. and, and the way that they feel is real. It right. might not be the truth, mm -hmm. but that's just the way it comes across. So how can you as a salesperson just be really calm and understanding and understand how they might feel? And that, you know what? Hey, I don't want to, I told her, I said, I don't want to work with anyone who thinks that I'm pushy. So, you know mm -hmm. what? Actually, I don't think we're going to be a good fit to work together. So that's no problem. Yes. And then people, right? That's the opposite of being desperate. And then they're <laughs> like, oh, well, wait, what? Yeah. What did you just say? Yeah. No, you're, I was really pushy. I apologize. I completely understand. A lot, some clients feel that way when they're making a decision mm -hmm. and that's totally okay. I honor and respect that. And I wish you nothing but the best. <laughs> but what I like, it's amazing the results you're going to get. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, what it's, I, what a, I it's like a 180 about degree. Yeah. You know, what I, what I different. like about that, uh, what I like about that, Michelle, though, is, is in some ways you're taking the person back to the, dis to the decision and why they made the decision. Cause you're correct. It's very easy later on to go. Oh, I, I, I didn't really want to do that. And they pushed me into it. The reality is you did want to do that. But maybe you just need to be taken back to what drove that decision in the first place. Right. What was their challenge? Mm -hmm. What was their problem? What did they want to create in their life? Why did that investor want to put money into that mm -hmm. company versus this company? It, it, when time passes, they're, all they have to do is blame. Most people blame other people. Sure. Right. Yeah, How yeah. many people take responsibility for their own actions. Well, mm -hmm. your clients are probably not going to do that. So taking them through the process of either a acknowledging where right. they were and that they made a decision and great, you don't want to work with people who think you're pushy anyway and mm -hmm. keep it moving or take them back to where they were when they made that decision. Like you said, remind them of their problems. Start asking those questions that tie it to why did they make that decision at that time? And let them realize, oh, I made that decision. You weren't really pushy, right? Yeah, yeah, because it's great because you can say, hey, listen, maybe we're not a good fit to work together. But just out of interest, how are you going to solve the issue that you wanted to solve in the first place? Like, you know, what are you going to do to do that? Yeah, because that's what the what do you, yeah, I'm or just come from a place of curiosity. Yeah. I'm yeah. really curious, like, how are you going to solve that problem that, you know, make it specific to whatever they told you? Yeah, yeah. But I'm just really curious. I would love to know because I think I have a few other people that might want to take that path too. 
And the other one is that you had the bit about the feeling, you know, without selling, without feeling sleazy. And I guess this is an interesting one because th this comes down to sometimes the percep the self perception that salespeople have, right? right? Because yeah, they've this been is all this is all self reflection right. stuff. Yeah, because they've been bombarded in many ways with. Um, negative cultural stereotypes of what salespeople are, right. and they're so, and sometimes they're so desperate to avoid it that they almost manifest it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the whole salesy part is your sales beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. It's, or if you're like in a rut, right? right? Like maybe I'm being too pushy, maybe I'm being too salesy. Um, but I don't have all the time in the world to go into it today. But I do. If you go yeah. to sellwithoutsleaze.com, mm -hmm. you can get my five step to yeah. helping you. I've got an email each day that will help your mindset on this. So again, it's like it's sell without sleaze.com. Sell without sleaze. I love it. Well, listen, yeah, yeah. We, are, we are bumping against the end of our time. So uh, this is perfect. If you want to tell everybody a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you, be great. Sure. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of resources on my website that will support you, the pitchqueen.com. I also have a mindset course if you're interested in learning more about that. So it's uh, how to think and act like an eight figure entrepreneur from all the people that I've interviewed and how they got past, uh, mm. you know, their sales blocks or mindset blocks, because to grow a business over eight figures, it takes a certain level. Um, so you can get that over at eightfiguretips.com. And I'm on Instagram or Facebook, the pitch queen. And I would love to connect with each of you. Yeah, well, how I can be a support. Yeah, listen, this has been great and great takeaways today, Michelle. Um, it's a really Wonderful. interesting conversation. Um, you know, maybe you'll come back and talk again. Maybe we'll go into your five steps a little deeper on another sure. occasion. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. And I'll see you over at eightfiguretips.com or sellwithoutsleaze.com. <laughs> yeah, I love that one, Sell Without Sleaze. So that's memorable and <laughs> people aren't going to forget that. Well, listen, Michelle, no, thanks. And it's totally free, that one. That one's free. Perfect. Well, thanks again. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeline of CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.